Welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. The Pharmacy Leaders Podcast is a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network with interviews and advice on building your professional network, brand, and a purposeful second income from students, residents, and innovative professionals. Hey, Tony here. Before we get started with the show, I just wanted to remind you that the Unicorn Pharmacist Jobs book is available. Uh, if you're looking for that perfect pharmacy job, there's 125 pharmacy students and pharmacy professionals in there that you can learn from. So check it out. It's available now on Kindle and just put in Unicorn Jobs in Amazon to find it. Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Today I have Melissa Mir Corrigan, who is a fellow with both APHA and ASHP, a leader in pharmacy education certification and accreditation. Uh, she served as the founding executive director and CEO of the Pharmacy Technician Certification Board in D.C., and that organization has now certified more than 600,000 pharmacy technicians. She's passionate about leadership and bringing diverse stakeholders together. Uh, Melissa serves on multiple boards in both pharmacy as well as in her community. She's chair for the 2019 Zeta Cooper Leadership Symposium Planning Committee, and it was her vision that led to the inaugural Zeta Cooper Symposium, where participants learned about the professional legacy of trailblazing women and modern-day pharmacy leaders. She's also serving on the board of directors of the Institute of the History of Pharmacy. So, Melissa, welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Thanks, Tony. I appreciate that you had me on the podcast today. Tell me a little bit about your background. Obviously, we've got many, many years to cover, but uh, let's try to just focus uh, specifically on the leadership uh, that we can kind of turn into the Zeta Cooper uh, Leadership Symposium. Uh, you are a leader, but uh, how are we not only honoring leaders, but uh, paying it forward and passing it on to the next generation of pharmacy students? Sure. Um, well, throughout my career, I've been interested in leadership and encouraging and mentoring leaders. But when I moved to Iowa seven years ago, I lived in Washington, D.C. for many years, but returned to the Midwest um, about seven years ago and learned from um, my time, was spending time with the University of Iowa Dean Don Latender about Zeta Mary Cooper. And when I first learned about Zeta Mary Cooper, I thought, oh, well, that's interesting. Um, but then I learned more about her background, that she graduated um, in the late 1800s, in 1897, and she was only one of two women in her pharmacy class. And then after that, she decided um, to remain at University of Iowa as an educator, and she was the first female faculty uh, member at the University of Iowa College of Pharmacy. And we think she was the first tenured female faculty professor across the country. So like Zeta, in my career, Quite frequently, I was the one, one of or only maybe one of two um, women who were at the table in a leadership role, whether it would be on a board of directors or on a panel. And so, you know, I really got to know Zeta a little bit better related to understanding her interest in starting things, starting organizations, being very focused on education and innovation and inclusion. And so I think our careers and our passion for education and for pharmacy kind of parallel each other. Okay, so tell me a little bit about the actual symposium. Where is it held? Uh, what are the times? And then what's going to be in it? Sure. So this is the fourth year for the Zeta Cooper Leadership Symposium. And I think what you're, one of the things your podcast listeners may resonate with them is that this all just started with an idea. And I was talking with Don Latender one day about Zeta Cooper, and I said, you know, we should really do something to honor her or to, you know, have more um, access for students and for residents to learn about her legacy. And so Don said, sure, whatever you want to do, go for it. And so we, that was when the idea to host some programming related to Zeta Cooper first happened. And we did some research related to what had happened related to women in leadership so that we had some data to work from and then put together a planning committee. And so it happens every spring in May, usually the first weekend in May, and it's typically been a half-day symposium where we bring in world-class um, leaders, uh, female leaders, and some are graduates of University of Iowa and or others share um, attributes with Zeta Cooper. Uh, Lucinda Main was one of our first keynote speakers, and she's the um, executive vice president and CEO of the American Associations of Colleges of Pharmacy, and Zeta Cooper was very aligned with that. 
Um, we're preparing for our fourth symposium, which will be next week on Saturday, May 4th, and we still have a few slots available for registration. I think a couple things to note. One is that it is free, and we really um, encourage as many students as possible to attend and residents, but we also have practitioners, and so we think it's very important for students and residents to interact with practitioners and to learn about their path. And we've done a couple things in the last few years that has really resonated with people. There's the opportunity to um, receive your uh, professional headshot during the day. And then um, in the last couple of years, we've done interactive work, uh, breakout sessions and workshops. And so you, know, you and I have both attended a lot of conferences over the years, and it's wonderful to hear from speakers. But what we learned in our evaluations is that the hands-on work, the small group work, um, is really beneficial, and that the students and residents and practitioners seem, seem to really enjoy that format. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about the speakers. Uh, Janet Carmichael is one of them. Tell me a little bit about what the selection process is like and what made you decide to uh, bring her on. Obviously, she has a, an extensive uh, award-winning resume and all that, but uh, there's probably one or two things that you really wanted to convey, and she's going to convey them during the uh, symposium. Yeah. You know, we're really thrilled to have um, Jan Carmichael back in Iowa for the Zeta Cooper Symposium. She is a real trailblazer and has lived her pharmacy career like Zeta. She is a past president of ASHP, the American Society of Health System Pharmacists, and really was in the first group of um, presidents that were women. Uh, since that time, since her presidency in the early 90s, there have been you know many more, but she was a real trailblazer with that. She also worked for the VA for many, many years and really was um, a trailblazer in clinical pharmacy and clinical pharmacy services. And so she, she now is doing consulting and is passionate about research. So what's very exciting for her keynote is she's going to talk about some gender research related to how women and men approach things um, related to leadership and just pharmacy practice in general. So I think there's going to be some key learnings there. The other piece that's kind of unique and, and very interesting about our Zader Cooper Symposium is that it is focused on leadership. And of course, um, in fulfilling the legacy of Zeta, we are encouraging more women leaders, but it's inclusive and it's open to everyone. And we're really proud that about 30% of our attendees are men. And so that's another really cool thing that um, will be, you know, you'll see again next week. Okay, well, let's um, the way that it's set up, it goes breakout sessions first, then negotiations workshop. But let's actually talk uh, about the negotiations workshop first, because that's your other, uh, if you want to call her speaker, but seems more like a facilitator, uh, but maybe a speaker as well. Uh, tell me a little bit about the negotiations workshop and why you felt you needed to use one or have one. Yeah, sure. Great question. Thank you, Tony. Well, last year um, in pharmacy, we're really working on trying to be interdisciplinary and collaborative with other colleges um, at University of Iowa. And so last year at the Zeta Cooper Symposium, we had the Dean of the College of the Tippy College of Business, uh, Sarah Gardiel was one of our keynote speakers. And during her talk um, in the Q&A, it came up that women and men have questions about negotiations. You know, how do they negotiate a new position? How do they negotiate salary? How do they negotiate in pharmacy practice on a daily basis with nurses and physicians. And so we're really fortunate that Michelle Williams is um, on faculty at Tippy, And she, um, I had actually attended a Tippy Women in Business seminar where she did this workshop, again, where it was interactive and that people at attending the seminar, you know, learn some real world skills and tactics. So we look forward to, again, having this collaboration with the Tippy College of Business. And, you know, no matter what you do in pharmacy, having business acumen and business skills is very, very important. And I think for all of us, being able to negotiate and just understand some of the principles and fundamentals of negotiations is really important. So we look forward to welcoming Michelle. I think she's going to be a real asset to our program. So you've got four breakouts, and I think students can go to three, or the attendees can go to three, uh, are they offered, all four offered at all three spots, or how does it exactly work? And then we can talk about the breakouts themselves. Sure. Um, the way that we've done it is in the pre-registration, um, individuals can select two of the four. And so um, then, um, and there's one slot of this section, and then, you know, we'll have a, 
um, transition from one breakout to the other. And again, our breakouts and really all of our programming is selected based on feedback from attendees. So each year after we complete the Zeta Cooper Symposium, and this is our fourth year, so after the, last year, the third year, we sent out an evaluation and sought feedback and you know, what really resonated with attendees or what do we see as trends that people will want to um, learn more about. So one of the things that came up as an interesting topic is this whole idea of how do you handle setbacks and failure and how can you learn from that and move forward? So we will have some outstanding speakers, a panel speaker talking about that focus. And then we also have a breakout session about authenticity and reinventing yourself to realize that, you know, your pharmacy career is not linear or it's not just one path. And so we have two speakers who are going to be talking about, you know, what your career journey can look like. I'm super excited. Um, I think all of our breakout sessions are outstanding, but we are bringing in um, from Drake University, Kelly Jo Welter, and also um, we have Stephanie Lucas from St. Louis College of Pharmacy. But Kelly Jo is the current APHA ASP president. So she's going to talk about hustle and tenacity and creating your X factor. And I think for those of us that were in Seattle, you and I were both out there um, last month, Kelly Jo certainly exhibits that. So I'm, I'm looking forward to learning from her. And then the final topic is such a hot topic. I think um, really not just in pharmacy, but just, you know, in our world today related to how do you navigate um, dual career partnerships and what does that look like? And so we're going to have several examples of um, some couples that have been together a shorter amount of time, um, some who have been together a longer amount of time related to, you know, how they figured out just how to run their lives, where they decide where they're going to live, where the jobs take them, and kind of how you do the off and on ramps to make sure that you can get everything done that you need to, um, you know, within your life. Well, let's dive into a couple of those because I think uh, you're definitely a person that could uh, put some uh, experience behind some of the answers. Let's start with the setbacks and failures. Uh, so 3,000 of the people that went into the residency uh, match, hoping to match, um, didn't match, uh, whether they pulled themselves out uh, or whatever. Um, how would this help someone like that? That And we can talk about branding too because there would be some you know, reinventing yourself after you're thinking this is where you're going to go. Um, Iowa and Drake have disproportionately high uh, match rates, so it's not as big a deal there. Uh, but certainly there are people out there who didn't match. So uh, how would it help someone who maybe – uh, was expecting to go down this clinical route this year, and it didn't happen this year, uh, and they may need to do it a different time. Yeah, that's a great question, Tony. I think one of the biggest pieces is, you know, when you were asking me the question, you talked about the numbers. And so I think a big piece with setbacks and failures or just transitions or off-ramps is to know you're not alone. And that many, many people, you know, there's a road and there's a path, and you think it might be one way. But um, that doesn't always happen. And I, I think because of our pharmacy training and, you know, in, in uh, medicine and in pharmacy and healthcare, sometimes there can be such precision and, um, you know, um, focus on lack of errors that when people see a bump in the road, they might think, oh, is that the end of the road? And I'm here to tell you it's not. I think multiple stories, and you know, I think that's a helpful thing to do after you experience a setback is to just think about your resilience and you know what other things you've been through that have been tough. But if that's not your road, whatever it is, that means it's a different road. And what's really, I think, help, helpful to be mindful of is that the different road could open things up in such a way um, that you just didn't experience or didn't know about. So you know, I think for those um, students and uh, residents, you know, that didn't match on the first one, it could mean that, you know, the experience you're going to gain in this coming year could set you on a different path. It could mean that, you know, where you thought you were going to go, that's not the right part of the country for you to be right now or right um, clinical practice. But, um, you know, change or, or um, a setback really does bring opportunity and you can learn so, so much from it really um what you're made of, and also, you know, the people around you that will be able to um, provide um, support as you navigate through it. 
Okay. And then uh, the second one really kind of speaks to branding. You didn't use the word branding, but um, just kind of uh, figuring out who you are to other people. When people talk about you, uh, what's kind of the first thing they say? And so a lot of people for me are the guy that writes the audio books or something like that. But how does a student that's in an accreditation kind of uh, – so the accreditation document keeps students doing certain things, and then there's some flexibility. Um, how does that work through kind of the, the year? I know that Iowa has something which – I don't know if it's unique, but it's certainly innovative where uh, P3s can actually take APPEs. Uh, to kind of explore more experientially than uh, others. It, it kind of goes further than the, just the P4 year. Uh, but how does someone kind of find that authenticity with what they really gravitate towards and then kind of brand that? Or, or are they getting feedback from others? How will the session help that person? Well, I think they'll be able to see possibilities. And, you know, in my case, um, I would say that people see me as a networker or connector and that um, I see possibilities. You know, my career has had common threads related to certification, accreditation, education, and standards. And even um, I've also been very um, interested in working with multiple organizations and bringing diverse pharmacy organizations and organizations related to education and certification together. And so how does one plus one equal three? So I think it's really important for like for participants to look at like what are your strengths and what are your skills? And I'm a very good listener and I can kind of see um, the different strategies or goals that people bring to the table and then say, well, what's the common ground and how can we can work on that together? I also, though, have... Um, I think part of my authentic self is that I do recognize that there's differences or sometimes people are going to need to disagree or, you know, personalities, they might not like each other or organizations may have different paths. But if you're trying to advance something within the profession of pharmacy, coalitions are working together. There's just strength in doing that, um, strength in doing that so that we show, you know, medicine that we're united and, you know, just strength that we show policymakers, et cetera. So, you know, how do you find that common ground and um, what does it look like? And then I've also been, um, and I think this session's going to touch on this with our two, two uh, speakers, really tried to be authentic and open. And, you know, I think that kind of gets back to the setbacks session that we, we just talked about is that, you know, sometimes you just don't know. And so I, what I very much encourage students and residents is to, you know, take the internship, join the group. Um, be a speaker, you know, volunteer for, uh, I moved from the Midwest to the East Coast and, you know, ended up, I thought I'd be out there a year or two and I was there 20 plus, but really try to expand your horizons and to put yourself around people that aren't just the same as you, because I think there's such richness and um, innovation related to diversity. Um, I've, I've talked to Kelly Jo Welter uh, in a kind of a dual podcast episode. So I've talked to her for an hour um, but I wanted to kind of talk about uh, someone else, the IPA uh, CEO, uh, Kate Gaynor, uh, who I just learned this uh, a couple of weeks ago, that she applied for her CEO position while she was eight and a half months pregnant. And then was uh, after that, she, I think there was uh, some kind of follow-up to it uh, where she, um, you know, has four kids in four years. And, and that was really a, a challenge, but shows her resilience um, how are you kind of spreading the word about this kind of hustle and tenacity that uh, women leaders are having? Um, because I think the profession is, well, the, certainly the schools are about 70% women now or 65, somewhere around there. And I have three daughters, so I just personally want to know. Yeah, you know, I think having um, programming like we're having at Zeta Cooper and just talking about it, I think talking about what works and what doesn't and, you know, how we navigate through a day. And, you know, I think Kate has one example of, you know, when she had the four kids under four, I think there's other um, people who are navigating aging parents or, you know, they may have a child that has a health condition or something like that. So it's like, all, there's a lot of balls that are in the air. And so I think talking about how do you do it? Um, what do you outsource? You know, how do you have others like help you with different things? And what does that look like? How do you figure out travel, you know, when you're trying to be on the road and you're 
um, partner or, you know, just how do you balance having work done on your house, all these kind of things. And so I think when we have examples about it and, you know, that's a nice segue after we're going to have a luncheon and then after lunch, there's some optional sessions. And one of our optional sessions in a, in a breakout in the afternoon is women in pharmacy, a networking round table. And those questions that you just asked me, Tony, we're going to cover in the round, ta- round table discussion after lunch, because we really want to have a safe place where men and women can talk about, hey, what's going on? What are the, some of the challenges? What are you trying to figure out? And, you know, to kind of um, think through of what does that look like when, you know, someone needs to be at the APHA meeting in Seattle or someone's going to Boston for ASHP and, you know, how do we um, juggle schedules and, and make it all work? Yeah, my wife's leaving for Boston for training for the the VA next week, so I'll be uh, watching the kiddos, and and yeah, so that kind of leads into the last breakout, which is the dual career partnerships, and um, I guess that's, I I don't know even how to speak about that, because it, we just kind of make it work, Uh, but what will you plan to be putting in that, because uh, certainly any advice on that is is always welcome. Yeah, you know, I think that's a similar one, where it's, it's, um, you know, we've, we've found couples, um, partners um, that work together and have made something work for them. So I think they're going to talk about a scenario where maybe a career opportunity came up and they had to talk about it to a couple as a couple. Should we move or, you know, when someone has extensive travel? Um, you know, I think the good news is in today's world with technology, we can be more mobile and, you know, people can have their um, cell phones, laptops, iPads with them. And so that can make some of the things easier, but it's, there's still a lot to sort out and think through about, you know, just the life kind of stuff. So I think that's going to be another kind of real world discussion, um, in a smaller group format where we're going to hear from our panelists. And, you know, I think the really neat thing about our Zeta Cooper conference and about Zeta Cooper's life in general is, you know, there's the opportunity to see, Hey, this worked, or, you know, maybe I could have done that better because I think all of us, um, could probably come up with an example where, you know, we wanted to be at something and then maybe we were delayed on a flight or, you know, there was just a conflict, so we weren't able to do it. But how do you, you know, navigate through all that and just make it work in the bigger picture? Okay. Well, we've kind of covered a little bit of the optional afternoon program, but I don't know if we went over the letter of intent and cover letter. And and what I guess I wanted to ask you, since you've applied for some jobs that are pretty unique. Uh, I mean, beyond unicorn, just there's one and maybe there didn't even exist before you, you went for it. Um, tell me a little bit about your thoughts on a letter of intent or cover letter as it relates to the story. I've heard of some people who actually do them before they even go for jobs because it's kind of a reflection of what they really want. And then I've also uh, heard the other way around where they try to craft it towards a specific job. But can you articulate maybe what you would put in a letter of intent? Sure. You know, I think one of the reasons why we wanted to do this session is we think equip, equipping students and residents with tools is really, really important. And so we want like real world takeaways. We want people to be excited and fired up and empowered from, you, you know, what they learn when they're with us on May 4th. But we also realize that you know, after the negotiation seminar, you will be probably negotiating at some point. So the cover letter, letter of intent is similar in that, you know, we are going to have people who have helped people either write these letters or all, or who have helped evaluate them as part of the residency process. Um, and so I think what's neat is we're going to do it in a workshop kind of format where we're going to look at some pieces and they're going to leave with some actual tangible um, outputs and outcomes. You know, related to my own experience, I think in this world, really understanding your own self and your strengths is really important. And so, you know, you for sure would want to tailor your cover letter or your application materials to a specific position. And I think in this um, digital mobile world related to keywords and searchable terms is super important related to what a specific position description talks about. But I also think it's important to, to be able to document and communicate your own value proposition. And so for me, one of the things that I talk about is that I have the ability to look at the big picture, the strategy and vision, and then narrow that down to business plans, goals, and execution and lead a team through that process. So, you know, typically I would talk about that kind of thing, 
You know, and I, I think your question too about um, in my career, I've had opportunities that maybe had been created or were new. And I think that's why it's always important for pharmacists, especially if you're looking to do some things that are kind of non-traditional, is to, you know, be open about what problem are you trying to solve and, you know, what are the needs out there in the marketplace? And then how can your skill set help with that? And what does that look like? And, you know, what's the value proposition related to that? Um, well, I think the I can put the link to the uh, symposium uh, on the, the show, uh, but is there, I've asked you a bunch of questions. Is there anything else that you wanted to make sure that people know uh, about the leadership symposium? It sounds like a, a very full Saturday, uh, Saturday morning, um, but anything you want other people to know? Um, just that applica applications are, um, you know, we still have space for registration and that it's not just individuals from Iowa. We've had people from surrounding states, from Illinois, Wisconsin, Minnesota, um, Nebraska come in. And, and, you know, we've also had people fly in from both coasts. So, you know, we really welcome, it's a robust um, discussion and really nationally renowned speakers that'll be there. And so we'd love to have you know, as, as many people there as um, possible that are interested and see it as a fit. And I think you'll end up, you know, very excited and renewed um, with some key ideas and takeaways from our time together. Okay. Well, thanks so much for being on the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Thank you, Tony. Support for this episode comes from the audiobook, Memorizing Pharmacology, a relaxed approach. With over 9,000 sales in the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia, it's the go-to resource to ease the pharmacology challenge. Available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon.com. In print, ebook, and audiobook. Thank you for listening to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. Be sure to share the show with the hashtag, hash pharmacy leaders. 